Welcome back to the Caspa Silver YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a tutorial on how you can run a testnet 11 node, which is currently running 10 blocks per second for Caspa. And this is going to be a great way for you to be able to be a part of Caspa development and help testing because recently in the public Caspa core research and development telegram group chat, they had mentioned, Coder of Stuff had mentioned here, that we ideally want more people to run the Testnet 11 node and a miner mining to it, no need to run Rothschild 2. So there's a call for more individuals to run Testnet 11. And the more people that run the Testnet, it just gives them more data to be able to analyze and makes Testnet more similar to how Mainnet is currently operating because it's almost impossible to perfectly replicate mainnet on testnet since you would have to pretty much get every single pool and every single miner that currently exists on mainnet to mine on testnet as well to kind of try to get the best replication. So the more people that are mining and running a testnet 11 node, the better for testing purposes so that we can prepare for 10 blocks per second that is set to release at the end of March. So we are really looking forward to that. And I hope this video will help you guys learn how you can actually be a part of helping Caspa development and making sure that it goes well. So first off, we're going to head over to the GitHub for Rusty Caspa. And when you head to the link that will be down below in the description, you can scroll all the way down below where it says Caspa on Rust. And you're going to be able to see the installation guides for each operating system. In this video, we're going to be doing this for Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and kind of just go in order of what it's telling me to do. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install Git for Windows. So I'm going to just go ahead and click the link right here and then just click download. And then this will just simply download the program for me to install. So then I'll put it to my desktop and go ahead and allow it to run on my computer. Just follow all the prompts here. Okay, once you've successfully downloaded Git, you can actually check to see if it downloaded by going to your terminal and then just putting here Git version and hitting enter. And you can see that a Git version does pop up here. So we have successfully downloaded Git. Next, you're going to want to install the protocol buffers and add the bin directory to your path. So the first thing we're going to do is download the protocol buffers. It's going to be a zip file right here. Then what we're going to do is just simply put this to our desktop. Once this is on our desktop fully downloaded, it's going to be a zip folder. We're going to go ahead and make a new folder called TN11. And this is just for testnet 11. And we're going to go ahead and put that here and right click on the zip folder, click extract all, and then browse to your desktop and put it in the testnet 11 folder. Next, you're going to click start and then search for environment variables. And this should pop up pretty much right when you start typing this out, but it says edit the system environment variables. You're going to click that and it's going to give you this little window right here. You'll then click environment variables down below here. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is click where it says path. And then where it says path, you're going to want to click edit right here. The next thing you want to do is click browse. And then you're going to want to browse to the bin folder that is within testnet 11. So this is currently in my desktop. I'm going to go to TN 11 right here. And then I'm going to just click bin that folder right there and click OK. And then I'm going to click OK one more time here. Click OK one more time over here and then just click OK there. Now that you've done that, you can go ahead and go back into your terminal and then go ahead and type this command. So it's going to be P-R-O-T-O-C space dash dash version. And then after you hit enter, you should get a version number. The next thing we're going to do is install LLVM. We're just going to go ahead and click that right there, put it to our desktop as well. And then once it pops up on our desktop, we're just going to go ahead and double click it and start the download process. You may get this dialog box. You can just go ahead and click more info and click run anyway. Then you're going to get the setup window. You're going to go ahead and click next here. Click I agree. And then when you get this dialog box right here, it says do not add LLVM to the system path. Make sure that you select add LLVM to the system path for all users and then click next next install and then it'll install this to your computer 
Next, we're going to have to install Rust toolchain. So we're going to go ahead and click this. And once you get to this page, you're going to be able to click this right here. And then you can put this to your desktop. Now, if you try to click this, it's not going to work. So if I click this right now, it's going to say right here, Rust requires a linker and Windows API libraries, but they don't seem to be available. These components can be acquired through a Visual Studio installer. And so that's what we're going to be doing here. So next, you're going to want to search for Visual Studio download. And then it should pretty much be the first option right here for Microsoft download Visual Studio tools. You can install it for free. So you just click the community version right here, free download. And then it's going to go right over here to our desktop as well. Once it gets to our desktop, you're just going to double click and start allowing it to download to your computer. Once it finishes downloading, you're going to get this window here. You're just going to want to scroll down and select desktop development with C++ and then just click install. All right. Once it's downloaded, this is going to pop up. You can go just go ahead and exit out of this and this as well. Then you can go ahead and go back to the rust up that you had downloaded here. And then it's going to give you this new dialog box, which all you have to do is just click enter to start the download. Okay. Rust is now installed and all you have to do is just press enter again to continue. This will close the terminal. And then if we go back into the terminal and just make a brand new one here, you can literally just put rust up and then dash dash version. And then you can see here that says rust up 1.27.1. So you successfully have rust now on your computer. The next thing you're going to want to do is install this right here by just copying and pasting this into your terminal. That's how pretty much the next steps are going to be here. So you're just going to search for your terminal here and then I can just right click that, click enter, and then it's going to just start downloading what is needed here. All right, once that's downloaded, you're going to want to go ahead and copy and paste the next line here and then just head back to your terminal, paste that in there. And then it's just going to do that next part very quickly here. And then that's pretty much it. Now you can just basically get clone the rusty Caspa code and then we're going to be right on our way to starting a testnet 11 node for Caspa here. So I'm going to just gonna click paste anyway. And then now we're just cloning rusty Caspa straight into here. So now you can actually run a mainnet node, but this video is going to be focused on testnet. We're going to head to this section here where it says testnet 11, and we're going to go ahead and click into the guide for that. Scroll all the way down to the bottom here, and we're going to just basically run this line of code right here. Make sure you first are in that directory of Rusty Caspel. So you just do CD Rusty Caspel just like that, and then hit enter. Then we're going to paste this line of code that I already copied. And then there you go. It's going to start downloading all of the needed files for this. And then once it's finished downloading, it should start right away into syncing to the 10 blocks per second testnet 11 node. Now, this is going to take a while because this is not only downloading everything you need, it's going to also try to sync up to the network. And this could take probably upwards to a few hours to sync up to the network because 10 blocks per second has a lot more blocks and you still need to download three past days of data. So it could take a few hours depending on your hardware. I'm going to be back once this finishes downloading all the necessary files and I am also synced up to the network. Okay, so I'm over here at my mini PC where I already have testnet 11 synced up to the network and I was previously mining, but I decided to stop that so I can show you guys how you can actually mine to testnet 11 with your CPU on your computer so that you can actually contribute to this testing phase that the developers are wanting. So we're going to go ahead and head back to the GitHub and scroll all the way down to the bottom. And this is the testnet 11 page and at the bottom it's going to show you what you need to do so it says for mining grab caspa miner from within the latest release so you're going to go to this release page and make sure that you download the caspa miner that is according to your operating system for me it's win 64 so amd 64.exe because this is windows once you download that you can place it in whichever folder that you want you can put it on the desktop 
personally on this mini PC. I have it within my documents right here under the testnet 11 folder. And so if I double click, you can see that it's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the folder and then click open in terminal. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this code in. So it's going to be period forward slash and then the name of the program that you just downloaded. And then it's going to be dash dash mining address. And then you're going to put the Caspa address that you want to mine to. Now, for me personally, I have Caspa NG on this mini PC and I have a video that will be down below in the description that will teach you guys how you can download Caspa NG to your computer. But this is a really good wallet to use because it lets you move between test nets and main net as you can see down below here and you can also connect to a public node so you don't actually have to connect to your own node for this wallet to work it connects to a public node and it just makes it really easy for anyone to basically create a wallet within any test net version so once you get this address you create a wallet you copy the address and you make sure that you put it in after where it says dash dash mining address you could see down below here, if I go back to the GitHub page, this is basically what I'm copying here. The only differences is the name of the application is this. And then right after I put mining address and then the Casper address that you're going to use. And then after that, you're just going to put dash dash testnet. Before you click enter, I just wanted to add this part here because I noticed this when I was editing the video that after testnet, add minus T1 and this is related to your CPU so that you're only using one thread instead of all of your threads of your CPU, which keeps the barrier for entry low and also keeps costs low for individuals. And then you're just going to click enter. Once you click enter, it's going to connect to testnet 11 and you should see that it's finding blocks successfully. And then if we go over here to the wallet, you can see on this end, I have a lot of UTXOs that are processing because I'm currently receiving blocks on testnet 11. So that is how you can sync up to testnet 11 and start testing 10 blocks per second on Caspa. Now, in the future, we're going to be doing a test run of hard forking testnet 10 to be running 10 blocks per second because testnet 10 is currently running on one block per second so when that happens i'm going to be dropping a video showing you guys how to start mining on testnet 10 so that you can actually be a part of the first ever hard fork test run of what we're basically going to see on mainnet in the coming months. So there'll be a video going out, but it's gonna be very simple. It's gonna involve you watching this video and knowing everything here so that you can be ready to do the next step, which would be transitioning to testnet 10, which KNG makes that very easy for you to get a testnet 10 wallet. And then on top of that, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can transition your node to testnet 10 and all that kind of stuff too. But that'll be in the future, but this video can at least get you going with understanding how to run testnet 11, which is currently needed. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And if you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new around here. And as always, don't be average, be different.